I just wired it, <clears throat> I should have horn here, right turn signal, left turn signal. This I believe is the four ways. Yeah, this is four ways. And then the other switch that's in here, not sure exactly where I'm at that yet, might be up right up in here. Uh, that switch is high beams, high beam and low beam. <clears throat> no more turn signal toggle switch. Russ Thompson turn signals mounted right in. No need for um, a relay or anything like that. Well, we'll see when we fire it up. We'll put some juice to it. See if we really needed a relay or not. Welcome back to Dan's Garage. Got a package from Breeze Automotive. Seat brackets from Breeze Automotive stainless steel seat brackets. <clears throat> All the hardware labeled. Breeze is pretty classy. Nothing else in there. Two seat brackets. This. Whatever this is. pieces of uh, particle wood. All right. I'll read directions to find out what that's for. And another package from Breeze. Get there. I don't know what that is. Lower oh, prop rod. Another prop rod. It's supposed to be for the truck. Some more stuff for that radiator kit, and that's it. Prop rod for the trunk. Prop rod for the hood. A rod. Oh, this holds the radiator. Lower radiator support. This is the lower radiator hose. The end. This is a bracket that holds that on. So we got here from, evidently was sourced from Summit. Oh, the shifter ball. I had a hell of a time finding a shifter ball that had the right size that also had the letters up top. Since my shifter leans down, uh, it'll mount like this. You'll be able to see it. Not that I need to see it, but it looks cool. We got here the instructions for the lower radiator hose support kit and the instructions for the trunk prop rod kit and the instructions for the lower radiator hose kit. Pretty cool. Breeze is a class act. Mark Reynolds with Breeze. Uh, if you're going to do one of these factory five kits, I highly recommend good Breeze for a lot of stuff. It's uh, make your life easy, easier. Took the uh, brake reservoir out and took it to a friend of mine. Uh, Mike is going to uh, TIG weld it for me. He's a real good TIG welder. He works with race cars and stuff. So he, uh, he's going to give it a shot, see if he can weld it up so I can get this thing back in there. If not, I'll probably have to go buy another one because I'm sure Factory 5 is not going to be able to get it to me in time with the supply chain issues and stuff. Just ran some electrical here. Horn wires, headlight wires for the driver's side. <clears throat> for the radiator, or for the fan. Just wire tied them together while my supervisor watched. 
find something else to do now. All right, I'm moving to the horns. Planned on doing some uh, some real loud horns or something like that. Eh, I don't really care. That's something I can always change later on. These look pretty loud. Looking and sounding two different things, I know, but it's not that big of a deal to change it later on, I don't think. We'll find out. <clears throat> This is a factory setup off of a uh, 91 Ford Mustang GT. Um, I think about pulling that bracket off and just using that. But I guess this doesn't look too bad. It just seems like there's a lot of weight to move those around unless they set them that way to begin with. Which is what they're showing here is they're, they're touching each other. I don't know. Trust the process. See how it works. Alright, one's hooked up. <clears throat> Factory 5 says uh, cut two inches off there, according to the book. Uh, you cut two inches off there, you're you're definitely going to need to add some. I might add it a little too much here, but I'd rather have too much wire than not enough wire. I'll clean this up and make it look neater. But for now, they're, they're attached. Alright, starting on the throttle pedal. I 
I taped this up because I'm thinking, or not taped it, rubber banded up because I'm thinking I may get rid of the spring that's in there and maybe screw it in and lock it in place rather than having a pedal that does this, just a solid pedal. I think that'd be better. IE427, um, this channel, the IE427 channel, uh, he's, in my opinion, like a master builder uh, for uh, uh, Factory 5 Roadsters, and uh, he talks about this pedal being basically a pile of junk, and the best way to make this work would be get rid of the spring and put a screw in here to make it solid. So I may do that, but to start with, I'm just going to work it like this and see how it goes. And don't forget to use a Loctite, according to him. I Loctite everything, but uh, yeah, he says uh, a lot of people aren't using Loctite on these and they fall apart. I can see why. Shit a little white on the subject. All right, pedal's mounted. I'm gonna run the cable. All right, I got the throttle cable in here. Uh, all I did was, according to the instructions, I cut the, the ferrule end off. Uh, they say try to cut it with sharp uh, cutters so that it doesn't fray. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, the instructions are very, very uh, clear as mud. Um, so, this is, I think, referenced in there. I don't know what they're calling it, but anyway, the pedal's mounted. So now this, I believe, is going to mount to the pedal itself. And this cable had to come out of the conduit, go all the back, all the way around, uh, run it in backwards. And I'm assuming this is going to go to the carburetor. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. It depends on the setup you have, I guess. But according to the instructions, um, I believe I'm doing it the right way. But I'll trust in the process. But now, I have to run this frayed cable into this tiny little hole here. I'm thinking maybe if I tape it, it's possible, but... <clears throat> not moving anymore. And it's not in far enough. Hmm. Might try drilling that hole out just a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> Drilled that hole out just a tiny bit bigger.
can't seem to hold it. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I finally got it on there. I uh, whittled at it with a pair of side cutters and uh, cleaned it up pretty good. Uh, I ran some heat shrink down on it, thinking I was going to uh, pull it back up. But before I pulled the heat shrink back up to push it in there with a the heat shrink on it, I uh, tried it and it went right in. So I went ahead and screwed the uh, Allen set screw in. And since I had the heat shrink, I ran it up and uh, put it on there. So now I'll look up under it every once in a while and just check and find out if it's backing out because I, I, I don't really like this setup, but I guess run some, drop some Loctite in there, but that's the way it is. All right, throttle cable here, snaps onto that ball down there. That's the accelerator pedal. Cable goes around here. I don't believe this is what they had described in the book, but the manual is, um, they don't do any good. Uh, they, they might have just not put anything in there and just left the parts there and let you figure it out because uh, they didn't do a very good job explaining it. A couple places like that in the manual, they do that. But this one's really bad. And then on top of that, they take away the color and just give you uh, black and white here. So you can't really tell what's going on. What end is there? This is the back end here. The ball would be on here, I'm assuming. I don't know. She'll cut that end off. I'm assuming you cut that end off so that you can pull it out and re-thread it through. It looks like it's re-threading it through there, through the firewall, into there, and around. That would mean, that would mean that I just put it together backwards. That would mean that this should go by the carburetor, which would make more sense because this is the type of connection that you'd need there. Uh, but then you're just supposed to leave a ball bouncing around inside under the, uh, connect to that, uh, accelerator pedal. I don't like that idea. So I guess I'll end up cutting this off, getting another one of these, and connecting that to the carburetor. I think that'd be a little more, eh, I think it'd be a little better anyway. Definitely better than just having a ball flopping around in there. So the pedal would be just flopping around with this thing. Uh, I don't know if this throttle cable thing is going to work. I've seen throttle linkage um, that comes out that's just got the arm rather than the cable. I think that may work better. I don't know. Once I get the engine in, I'll, I'll see um, what would be best. But yeah, for now, that's, that's enough with the throttle cable for now anyway. Okay, so I was looking along the wall here to see if I could find this. I didn't realize that this came with the kit. So I looked it up. This is a throttle return spring here, and then here's another one of these. This goes down on the pedal, and uh, of course, as I was saying before, the directions don't exactly do it any justice, but it appears that the throttle cable that come with this needs cut on both ends. So you cut that end off, thread it through reverse through the conduit cable, <clears throat> and then once you get to the part where you're actually going to mount it to the engine, or to the carburetor, or throttle oil or whatever, you're going to need this piece, which is a, a, another one, where you cut the uh, cable and try not to make it fray, and run it through there and then cinch it down with that. So I had to look back through 13777 through all of my parts, and the stuff that's highlighted is stuff I have. The stuff that's not highlighted is stuff that I need. So, I found it. 13777, accelerator cable components, consisting of uh, accelerator cable, or accelerator pedal capture, accelerator cable, uh, the 5 16th by 24 nut, that one, and return spring, ball stud retainer with ball stud. That's 
the part that I would need to finish that cable. So it looks like I will be using that cable as long as the cable stays inside this little thing here. I just don't like anything that press fits the cable in there like that. But I'll give it a shot, see how it works. It's just part of the thing. You, you work 15 minutes on the car, spend 45 minutes looking for parts and tools. That's just the way it works. All right, going back through my book, uh, looking for dog-eared pages that, uh, of stuff that I haven't been able to finish or haven't done. And I come to the uh, rack opinion, uh, the alignment, somewhat of the alignment anyway. Um, I have to set that. Did all the install, just kind of over, looked at this over. I just wanted to get this together. I knew I was going to align it later on, but now it's time. I might as well do it. So I got to thread these down one to two inches down the steering rack, the tie rod ends with a total of 53 and 1 16th. All right, that's what's up. It's a rough measurement. I know it's not straight, so it ain't gonna matter a whole lot, but just get a quick idea. Oh yeah, that's why this side's been toenailing in. There. Anything that's got a mark on it, a nut, bolt that has a mark with a paint marker, those have actually been torqued to torque spec. Anything to do with steering that needs to be adjusted for alignment, I did not torque it down. find uh, the center to adjust this you have to take your steering wheel all the way to one side so this is uh, the top of the wheel so one two three so right in the middle of this right about there so that's three so now I need to go back around one and a half times because that's half a three one Center. Now the rest should adjust out in the front there. Right. Yeah, we're way off. <clears throat> I'm not torquing these down yet. So now I'm going to walk around the garage for a half hour trying to find the castle nut. So I'll finish another trip on. <clears throat> I have the wheel alignment tool to align my own wheels, and I'll probably be using that as soon as I put this thing on the ground. Okay, this is the switch. It's a multi-function switch that plugs into the back of each one of the gauges um, to program them. Uh, it'll end up on the speedo where it records lap, I think it's lap times and uh, quarter mile times, stuff like that. <clears throat> it's a uh, pretty multi-function let's put it that way and then you also unplug it out of the back of the speedo and then you can plug it into other gauges like the clock 
etc and you know go through and set it um but anyway i don't want to just let it hang down so i'm gonna go ahead and mount it i think right in here to where i can get to it when i need it but it's not gonna be something that's used all the time so i'm gonna mount it out of the way Okay, I'm gonna put this LED light strip that came with the kit. This is supposed to go up under the dash here for courtesy lights. Um, I've ran an extra wire for my courtesy lights that I ran all the way around. And uh, this is the extra wires right here. I'm gonna run them through the top of the glove box here. I'm gonna mount this right here. And right now I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of the um, glove box here. Put this uh, grommet in there so that I can run the wires through and the wires won't uh, in time rub and uh, rub the conduit off and then uh, short out so needs to be a little bit bigger. These wires gonna connect to these wires, and they'll be up tight out of sight behind the dash, along with that bird's nest. <clears throat> All right, let's gonna mount this like this, hidden away. But I noticed that the red and black wires were showing right here, so I went and put some a little bit of black heat shrink on that area there, just so. On the occasion that you do look up there when you're digging through here not much digging gonna go on because it's a pretty small glove box but i don't want those black and red wires showing so i covered it with uh, black so that uh, you can't see that and this is white so I just i don't know just do what we can to make it look as factory as possible i guess you'd say <clears throat> not like it's holding up a lot of weight but i'm just gonna stay here probably way more LEDs than I need in there. Probably one, two, or three is probably all I need, but I don't feel like cutting it. And I really wasn't going to use it, but I don't want the light in here that takes up a bunch of space, so this is one that takes up virtually no space. So, I'll give it a shot. But I want light, because you can never have too much light, especially when you really need it. wires up, took them out of the way. I got a camera clamp that's on my steering wheel. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna put a put a switch behind this dash here. You reach up under the dash and you can flip a switch back here. Well, I need to cover this up anyway, so I made a little template. So that's gonna go like that. That'll fold over. And this is my high beam. That'll go over here on this in here somewhere. And 
leave it open to where I can put more stuff there if I want to. I can't think of anything else I'd want to put there, but for right now, just to keep the dash clean and everything. Up tight, out of sight. So I'm going to go make this on the, the brake out of uh, aluminum. Okay, these are uh, the wood panels that'll go up under the seats, um, up under driver and passenger seat. I've put some uh, water seal, water guard, to uh, waterproof the panels in case anyone pees their pants while, while they're driving. I mean, not driving, but uh, while they're in the passenger seat. Could be some urination or defecation, especially if I'm driving. All right, this is a piece of scrap that I used to cut out the uh, breeze cubby. Never throw any of your aluminum away. Alright, right, this side's dry. I'm going to put a little bit on this side too.